Well, welcome to our Valentine's Day special session of I Heart Pluto. Uh, my name is Kevin Schindler. I'm the historian at Lowell Observatory and pleased to serve as host this week. Um, we have so many great um, talks and programs going on. Um, every night we have one to three different presentations. Earlier this night, we, we uh, heard about Clyde Tamba from members of his family and historians and editor of Astronomy Magazine. Um, later in the week, we'll, we have astronauts, we have other astronomers, we have artists, all sorts of great programs. And we also have several ongoing things that, that you can check out anytime. Um, one of these is an art exhibit by the International Association of Astronomical Artists. And if you go to the iHeart Pluto website, um, you can check out that um, exhibit there. And, and in a couple of nights, we'll also be hearing from several of those artists about how Pluto has been depicted through the years. Um, another event that's ongoing, if you're here in Flagstaff, our friends down at Karma Sushi Restaurant, that's where Clyde Tomba ate the night he discovered Pluto, although it was not a sushi restaurant back then. Um, but they have, years ago, they created a Pluto roll in honor of, of Flagstaff as home of Pluto. And they brought back uh, the Pluto roll for the festival this year. And also our friends with the local ham radio group um, are operating out of the Lowell um, parking lot this week. So if you uh, do ham radio, you can um, link into that. Um, and that's a lot of fun too. Um, besides those the ongoing events, um, I'll also mention that our gift shop um, has a bunch of special Pluto items this week, um, books and t-shirts and posters, a lot of great things. Um, so you can check that out on the website also. Um, so lots of really fun things um, as we celebrate the scientific and cultural heritage of Pluto. Um, and this is where it all happened. I'm sitting in Clyde Tumbaugh's office, um, which today is one of our astronomers, Amanda Bosch, um, who's also in charge of our technical um, facilities. And so if you, if you come up to Lowell, um, you're just surrounded by Pluto. And because of COVID, we, we can't do that right now, but we can bring Pluto to you. And that's our goal this week. Um, so lots of astronomers, um, astronauts, as I mentioned. We also have educators um, that are joining us. Um, so several of our educators here at Lowell will be sharing a tour of the grounds tomorrow night with all the Lowell Observatory Pluto places around here. Um, but tonight we have an educator from Colorado, Jeff Gagne. And Jeff is a very enthusiastic um, inspiring educator. Um, and last year he was here at our event and debuted um, his Zach and Zoe um, publication about Pluto and he, he'll maybe talk about that. So we're really pleased to have Jeff here tonight. Um, if you have questions throughout this, um, just send them in through your YouTube chat and we'll um, pose those to Jeff as we go along. Um, so with that, Jeff, I'll let you take it away. Kevin, thank you so much. I am thrilled to be here and I really appreciate that intro. Thank you. Uh, I was pleased to be part of last night's online chat uh, and speech with Dr. St with you and Dr. Stern, getting the I Heart Pluto Festival kicked off and I thoroughly enjoyed the entire hour of the talk. So I am thrilled to be on tonight and I'm thrilled that I was able to squeeze in on a Sunday night where I know a lot of school students have tomorrow off from school because I have a few activities that I'm gonna be walking through today on how kids can explore planets the same way that scientists and astronomers at Lowell or like Dr. Stern and all around the world are doing only at our kid level. So let me go ahead and jump right in. So I'm going to share my screen here, everybody. I promise you there's not be death by point. I promise you, actually, before I, sh before I share, I do have some PowerPoint slides. They give you seeing the visuals before I walk through it really gives a better idea of why we're doing these activities. It's not just to make a mess in mom and dad's kitchen, and it's not just to do an activity that we kind of link to space. These are activities that are actually scientifically linked 
to the lessons that planetary scientists, astronomers are using as they are grown-ups. But when we're kids and we're not yet grown-ups, we can't do exactly the same things. So one of the things that I do with, with Zach and Adventures is I use some creativity to turn those real-world scientific experiments and learning opportunities that uh, grown-ups and scientists and astronomers are doing all around the world, especially at Lowell and especially with the New Horizons mission, mission and all of the information that we've gotten back from Pluto, uh, to translate those down into things that we can do with classrooms full of kids or just us kids at home because they are fun to do, but we're actually learning at the same time. So I'm going to go ahead and share a few slides. So let me do that right there. So yes, kids can explore planets too. No, you do not need to be Clyde Tombaugh working at Lowell Observatory looking to discover a planet. Though you can look through a telescope and look at all the planets that have been discovered. And if you ever get a chance to look through a telescope large enough, maybe look for ones that haven't been discovered like those other dwarf planets and planetary bodies that are out in the Kuiper Belt, just waiting to be discovered, maybe by somebody like you. So what are we doing today? I call this, we're actually gonna run through four activities. There is one main one, uh, and that main one I call a cryobot mission to, to your, usually it's a cryobot mission to Europa. And the re I'll get to the reason I call it that in just a moment. But with all of the data that has come back about Pluto, and we now know, or at least suspect, if they haven't confirmed, the liquid ocean that is underneath the surface of Pluto, this cryobot mission works exactly the same way for an eventual cryobot mission to Pluto. And the cool thing about that is, if you happen to hear Dr. Stern's talk last night, about a Pluto lander mission that is being discussed right now, even if it does get approved, it won't land for another perhaps 20 years based on the building of the program and the launching of that mission. And the fact that it's an orbiter, it needs to slow down. It can't just keep speeding up and zoom past Pluto the way their New Horizons spacecraft did. So the mission will take a lot longer which means that if you love this, this uh, activity mission that we're gonna do tonight, or whenever you watch this recording, you could grow up and eventually work on this mission because just like Dr. Stern uh, and the New Horizons mission, it will take well over 20 years for this to come to fruition, which means we get to get started right on our kitchen tables right now this weekend. So. Uh, I list Pluto, I list Jupiter's icy moon Europa, talk about that in a moment, and it's sort of twin icy moon of Saturn Enceladus. So let me go ahead and move that slide. There we go. So who is Jeff? Why are you listening to me during Lowell Observatory's One High Heart Pluto Festival? Starting from the left, as Kevin mentioned, I am creator of Zach and Zoe Adventures. Zoe, the little blonde that you can see, that's my nine-year-old daughter who wants to grow up to be an astronaut. So after a health scare, I shifted my careers and I started a space and STEM brand for kids because that's what my daughter loved. And if I wasn't going to be able to stay around long, long enough, I wanted things to leave behind so she knew just how much her daddy loved her and loved her interest in the same thing that her daddy loves. I'm a space geek from way back. Uh, right in the middle there, you see I'm the director of the Starlight Observatory here in Colorado Springs, Colorado. We have a beautiful 10 inch Maxitov Newtonian inside that dome. That dome happens to sit on my daughter's elementary school campus. And we do all sorts of public programming, family star parties, we brought the entire elementary school out safely out to see the solar eclipse in 2017. 
We've been watching planetary conjunctions to include the one most of us saw just before Christmas with Jupiter and Saturn getting super close in the sky. I also serve as a space education specialist at the Discovery Center here in Colorado Springs, and I am a former Air Force officer. That is me, and I am a giant fan of Lowell Observatory, its history, its grounds, its people. I absolutely love it. And my first visit there was only a couple of years ago. And then last year, I was blessed enough to partner with Lowell Observatory to create a special issue of my Stem to Bloom magazine, which is the only space and science, uh, excuse me, space and STEM magazine for kids of its kind, partnering with Lowell Observatory to make this entire issue about Lowell, Pluto, the discovery and the entire history. It's been a whole lot of fun. We just released issue 30. We make these magazines all the time. As you can see on the left, we've also written three children's books that are all about how kids who love space and STEM topics can continue their learning of those topics without waiting for their teacher to assign them a new task or waiting for another field trip or waiting for the family vacation to take a ride to Lowell Observatory. We as kids that are space lovers, we can start reaching out, learning and doing things all on our own. So what are we here for? I said it wasn't gonna be death by PowerPoint. What are we here for? We are here to explore planets. So let's jump right into it, shall we? All right, first things first, I do run a space and STEM brand for kids. Uh, I do run a space and STEM brand for kids. So safety is always first. A couple of things I'm gonna do tonight, I'm gonna have some hot water uh, and you'll see why. And then I'm going to use something to freeze very quickly. So if you are going to do these activities, always ask mom and dad and always have safety first in mind. Now, I have two activities that we're actually not going to go through right here because I don't have long enough. So I'm gonna show you the cooler ones because these first two, I believe a lot of space loving kids either have seen or have already done. This one here is called the rubber band rover. And you make it out of cardboard, a pencil, a couple of lifesavers, some tape and a couple of rubber bands. And it is actually a really neat rover because as you can see in the black and white image, the drawing, it starts with square wheels. And obviously as a kid, our brains first go to, well, my mom's car doesn't have square wheels. Why does this rover I'm building? And once you build it, you will learn why. But then after you build it, this is one of my favorite activities to be able to engineer and modify. Let's not forget engineering is that E in STEM. So we are doing STEM learning while playing with a really cool rover. So this is one that's super easy to modify and you can continue to build, rebuild and retest and see how cool you can make your moon, Mars, or even at this point, Pluto lander. Dr. Stern is talking about a Pluto lander mission. Uh, excuse me, a Pluto orbiter mission right now. As soon as that gets approved, we don't know when that'll be, but as soon as an orbiter mission gets approved to study Pluto in even more detail, the next thing Pluto loving scientists and us general public are going to want is a Pluto lander. So that's going to be right on the heels. And those of us that are young kids, that's what those are the missions we are going to be working on. The missions that are current right now will be done and gone. So this one is a cool mission for you guys to do, but we're not going to go through it today. Another one that you may have either seen or done before is a lander, a lander mission. A lot of uh, you'll see this activity if you search for moon lander activity or Mars lander activity. And as you can see, it's again, very simple with cardboard tape, a little paper Dixie cup and some astronauts. Most people choose those mini marshmallows or maybe some people 3D print 
a tiny little, a couple of tiny little astronauts that you have to stay safe in their capsule. And you figure out the best way to make it land safely without tipping over and, uh, and injuring the astronauts. You need a safe landing. But again, this is an easy one to find on the internet. Uh, it is super fun to do. And one thing I love to teach whenever I am doing a lesson, whether it's virtual or I have students in front of me or kids in front of me, is when you put all of these missions together, all of these activities, what do you have? You have a full space mission the same way NASA plans it. Because after a lander lands on Mars, what's going to happen? And what's happening in just four days? There is a rover. So yes, it's landing without its own spacecraft. It's landing with a sky crane, but it is a lander mission and a rover mission. So when you string these activities together, we get to do a kid version of a full space mission. And I love it. It's so much fun. So those are two that you can do and you can look up, but we are gonna move on. Carl Sagan is one of my favorite scientists. And he once said, somewhere, something incredible is waiting to be known. And because this is the I Heart Pluto Festival, can you think of a better place that Carl may have been talking about than Pluto and the entire Pluto system? whether it's its binary partner, Charon, or one of its other four moons. But we are still learning all about Pluto, and something incredible is waiting to be known. Maybe we will be the ones to grow up and find out what that is. All right, so I told you this could be a Pluto mission, a Pluto cryobot mission, but I call it a Europa cryobot mission because NASA has already approved a Europa Clipper mission, uh, a Europa Orbiter mission, I should call it. And the name of it is the Europa Clipper, which you can see here. And if any of you like 3D printing, take a look. I have a 3D printed Europa Clipper right here. And if you have or have access to 3D printing, you can, three, you can find this model on Thingiverse for free, print it out, glue it together, and you will have your own Europa Clipper to go with your Europa Cryobot mission. Uh, so this mission has already been approved. It is an orbiter mission. You can see the years it's targeted for. Um, and one of its missions as an orbiter is to scan the surface of this icy moon that is orbiting Jupiter and search for the best place for an eventual lander mission. And that lander mission is going to have a cryobot. I didn't make that up. NASA is already having contests and there are companies that are already creating underwater rovers, which they are calling cryobots. Cryo for freeze and bot for robot. Bots that can handle the frozen uh, freezing through the frozen crust and the freezing temperatures of the water that's gonna be in that liquid ocean. Uh, neat connector with this Europa Clipper mission is that Dr. Stern himself is on the Europa Orbiter, the Europa Clipper team. That is a pretty cool link. I enjoy that. But I bet if there are kids watching, and I'm sure the grown-ups have also seen this, uh, whether it's in class or just learning about the favorite things we've learned, or if you've ever seen a scientist give a talk, you have seen a 3D cross-section. Uh, and that's where an image like this image on the right of your screen is a 3D picture or a 3D image of what the inside of a celestial body, in this, in this case a moon, what it looks like. So you can see that icy, cover, that icy covering, because it orbits so far away from the sun, this liquid ocean freezes on top, very understandable, but there is a liquid ocean under that ice. This is not in question, it has been proven. And Dr. Stern now talks about how liquid oceans, uh, especially subsurface liquid oceans like this one, are more the norm in the outer solar system, 
uh, as we discover more and more of them. So you can also see at the bottom, there is a hard rocky moon at the base, at the core. But then above that for Europa, the entire rocky moon is covered in this liquid ocean, which is then in turn covered with this icy crust, which you can see over here. We've all seen these, but what I have done with Zach and Zoe Adventures is created brand new activity. So get to that in just a second. Here is uh, an artist's conception of what a Europa lander could look like. So this is that Europa uh, surface. There are geysers which have told spacecraft that there is liquid water underneath. That's how we know, that's part of how we know. And these, this lander will be carrying some form of a cryobot that we want to be able to sink into, melt into this icy crust so that it can swim around in that liquid ocean. And why? Because liquid water is the best place humans have ever found to search for signs of life or even for life itself. So uh, when I, I have these mentioned over here, the belly release or robot arm release as two separate options. If you go back, if we go back a couple of slides and we were talking about that lander activity that we can do, when I do this with older kids and students, I will have them create a lander that will have a little cryobot on it. So they will have to decide whether or not uh, they want to deploy their cryobot from the belly underneath the lander or have a separate robot arm so their cryobot can be released from a separate portion of the icy crust, not where the lander is sitting. Now, moving on. Thanks to Dr. Stern and the entire New Horizons team, we now know a lot more about planet Pluto. And that is, we're not gonna get into planet dwarf planet today. Dr. Stern did that great yesterday. Uh, I, I believe it's a planetary body, I call it planet Pluto. You can see in this image on the left, a 3D cross section, which has been built based on the data that has come back from New Horizons. So a solid core, and then a liquid surface, a molten surface, a liquid surface, and then a solid and icy crust mixed together, which is what we see in all of those beautiful photos. So take a look on the right here. This is a 3D cross section that was drawn. This is an artist's drawing, but it's exactly what we need. And it has a lot more detail on the surface of Pluto that you can see up here. We will actually come back to that. So don't let me forget, I won't, but we're gonna get back to that surface. But then this is a frozen layer. And then you can see uh, the liquid ocean underneath. Do you think that we are going to eventually want to study and learn about that liquid ocean? I absolutely do. The New Horizons mission and all of the information that has come back from the Pluto system have been one of the most beloved uh, missions, space missions of all time. And Pluto, as you can tell from this iHeart Festival, iHeart Pluto Festival, uh, Pluto is a lot of people's favorite. So we want to continue learning. So let's get to that exploring planets. Finally, Mr. Jeff. All right. What we are going to do is we are going to build this cross section. Instead of doing activities we have done before, I have invented one where we can create a 3D cross section of a planetary body. And then we are also going to send a cryobot into the liquid ocean through a frozen surface. And we are gonna explore that Pluto ocean ourselves right now. I will do it now and you guys can do it tomorrow. Moms and dads, if you're watching, this entire activity will only cost you $1. And I will tell you that one in just a moment. So uh, here we go, follow along. I will show you everything that I have. This is just a regular plastic cup. You want a clear cup so you can see through it. This one happens to have lines, no big deal. Clear cup. I have put sand in the bottom of my cup. Notice in the 3D picture on my slide, 
Uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing right now. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to move on with two other slides first. So I'm going to show you, this is the Europa Pluto Cryobot Activity Mission. So you're going to see, we're going to start with a cup, put dirt in it, add the water on a crust. Then we are going to freeze it and we are going to push our cryobot through it. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing so you guys can see me larger. So to build our 3D cross-section model, we start with a clear plastic cup. Can be any size, but doesn't need to be big. You can see this one's pretty small. I have sand and you can use dirt. You can use, some, you can use pebbles. Uh, you just want to have that solid moon surface, which is the core of the planetary body that we are going to be studying. Then you just take regular water, pour it in slowly. The slower you pour it in, the less you will disturb your dirt surface. There you go. It's, it's already clear and some of that dirt and sand is set. So if you just a moment, it'll settle all the way down, have a clear liquid ocean. You have a planetary body with a clear liquid ocean. And then Mr. Jeff, how do we get that icy crust? This is where moms and dads, you just need to spend $1 on this because most people will now shake with those gels. Gels won't work for this. You need to go to your local dollar store and get that shaving cream. Just $1, look at this can. This can lasts me a long time to do this. Shake it up real good because you don't want it very liquid. You actually want it super foamy. So a new can works well if it's the end, may not work as well. It's a brand new can I just cracked open. But what we're gonna do is keeping the can upright, we are gonna squirt in some shaving foam, just enough. You notice it's not all the way, I didn't make a big mountain on top of my ocean, but notice how it doesn't mix with my ocean. Right there, I'm actually gonna move a light here. So you guys can a little bit better. There we go. Can't see me as well, but you want to see the activity. So see how, how that liquid ocean is still here. You're going to take a knife, just a plastic knife is fine, even a tongue depressor or popsicle stick. If you're doing this with students uh, or out in groups, so you're not using knives, uh, then gently, all you're going to do is spread your shaving foam, your shaving cream across the top so that you have a solid surface, just like that. Now notice, even though I tilted it towards you, I still have a rocky planetary body, a liquid ocean, and an icy crust. Oh wait, Mr. Jeff, not icy yet. What do we do? Well, luckily this is virtual, so I'm at my house, so I have already made three of these to be able to show you exactly what is happening so notice that this one here is a little bit, you can see that through there, all of the shaving foam doesn't come off on my finger. So this one has been in the freezer. I'm just checking. This one has been in the freezer about 20 minutes. Notice I have about an inch of an icy crust. It's only been in for 20 minutes. And then I have a coffee cup over here which has some marbles in it with a little bit of water. My lovely wife is being my assistant today. She is off camera. So this is where safety first, have mom and dad help with this, but I have water that I've heated up and I have the marbles inside, which are going to serve as our cryobot. So I'm gonna take my, mar my hot marble, my cryobot, and I'm gonna put it on the surface and notice that one went straight straight through. So I have a cryo in the liquid ocean of Pluto or Europa or Enceladus. But Mr. Jeff, that was fast and it wasn't too much fun. All right, let's try one that's a little bit more solid up on top. I got to tell you, if NASA found a spot like this on Europa for their first cryobot, I think they'd be thrilled that it went through that quickly. But for an activity, we want one that's a little more fun. 
So I want you guys to notice, I'm gonna bring this right in close. This is solid. This is now frozen. Just a little bit's coming off because my finger is warm. But same thing, Lake Ocean, uh, core, but a frozen icy surface. I have two more, so I have two more that I am going to show you. This one is going to be a yellow cryobot, but then when you put it on the surface, notice that it does not sink straight through. A little bit bright, trying to adjust the lighting, but notice how, oh, there we go. Notice how it is going down slowly. And then when it goes through, look at that. How cool is that? When it goes down, it takes the shaving foam with it. And then all of that shaving foam uh, melts off of your cryobot and heads up to the surface. So again, we have a cryobot through the surface. And take a look at the crater that was left from that one. We'll talk about that after I show you my third one. That one was in the freezer for 25 minutes. Just to give you guys ideas on how this is gonna be. But obviously as space and science geeks, we love to test. So you guys can test out the times. And obviously it's gonna depend on the thickness and how warm the water was to your freezer. And I have one cool trick to show you after we're done with this activity. Uh, even if you're not at home with your freezer, you can take this activity on the road. Do it in a classroom, do it where you're presenting somewhere, do it with your, with your friends. Uh, just always be safe doing it. Now this one has been freezer the longest. And again, we have a solid surface. And I have one more cryobot, which has heated. This one's gonna be red. I'm gonna plate right there on top. So this one has landed on the surface of Pluto. And then while this one is melting in, while you guys watch that, that's really cool. I will tell you one thing my students and kids loved, which is uh, using their cameras or their iPads and doing slow motion video of this process right here. Now, you may be saying, but Mr. Jeff, that's melting in very as it is. That's true, but I want you to watch. Once it finishes melting through, look how quickly it goes through the surface. And I want you guys to watch how quickly it falls. It's still right there. See how fast that part happens right there? As your cryobot into the liquid ocean lands on the surface and all of that shaving foam comes off of your cryobot, the kids and students love slow-mo video of watching that happen. Uh, that has been one of their favorites. Now, another thing I want to talk about is the actual, why this is an actual mission. This is exactly how NASA is going to get to, this, to the liquid oceans that are underneath those frozen surfaces. We're going to be able to bring giant equipment out there and build uh, and dig a giant hole. Space is super cold. As soon as a hole gets dug, it is going to freeze back over again. So, to Jeff, what do we do about that freighter? Isn't that breeze back over? Yes. And one of my lessons that I do with this activity is I ask kids and students, how are we going to have our cryobot communicate with the lander that stays up here on the surface? Will we need to? I don't want to give you guys the answers. Uh, we don't know what the answers are because we haven't designed this mission yet. We are not there, which is why I love it for kids and students. So maybe you guys have ideas. I would love to see it posted or share it with our, share it on social media. I will observe it with us at Zach and Zoe Adventures. Uh, but these are three different, uh, three different models you saw. But if you noticed, all of my crusts were about the same thickness. You could obviously make your icy thicker if you want it to take longer to melt through. You can make your ice thinner if you want it to take less time to, to freeze and then melt through. Lots of ways 
that you can, uh, you can what I call level up this experience and this activity and really turn it into a real kid's mission. I am going to go ahead and share my screen again, and I'm gonna show you those two slides again, and we will be back to this one. Oops, click there. So as you guys see, and we'll make these slides available to anybody who wants them through Lowell Observatory. Uh, and obviously they will be in this recording. You'll be able to see those. But these pictures obviously make a lot more sense now that you have seen the activity uh, for the cryobot built and done. Uh, and then you can see this is exactly how it's going to happen. But Mr. Jeff, you said there was a couple of level ups. All right, before I get to the level ups, actually I'll do the level ups first, uh, get ahead of myself. So the first level up for this is if you really love this activity and let's say you want to be the one who grows up and is the person that sends a cryobot maybe to Pluto, uh, maybe you want to add to this. One thing I have yet to do, but I need to, is this level up right here. They actually create micro remote control submarines for as little as three dollars. Moms and dads, you don't need to buy these. Uh, the activity is fun as it is. This is only for kids that really, really love this activity, or this is really more for teachers that want to do this with a bigger tank uh, in their class so that you could actually see what it looks like. Because obviously with our marbles, we're not able to control our marble and have it swim around to search for life uh, in that liquid ocean of that planetary body. The second level up is my favorite. Uh, raise your hand if you love water bears. Do you know what tardigrades are? Of course you do. Uh, a lot of us have seen those little videos with their six legs swimming around and that little mouth on their face. Uh, water bears are super cool, but did you know that you can have a water bear for just 14 bucks online. Again, moms and dads, this is not to spend money. This is more for teachers, because as you can see right under it, uh, this is when I have a class full of students break up into groups. And if you follow my cursor, they each build their own um, 3D cross section of a planetary body. In this case, we're in Pluto. So each group builds them, but I have already seeded a couple of groups water with tardigrades. So inside their liquid ocean, there are tardigrades swimming around in a couple of their liquid oceans. So after we do the entire activity and get their green cryobot, as the example shows, into their liquid ocean, they then have to transfer and go to biology or astrobiology class uh, or lesson and start searching their water for the signs of which groups can find life in their water. Because we know it's there. I know how many groups have a tardigrade or a water bear in their liquid ocean. So those groups have to identify it. We all have to search. So this is where it really is just like an adult mission worked all the way back down to kid level. Like I told you, my daughter is nine. This is Zoe right here. We started Zach and Zoe Adventures when she was six. She and I love doing all these things right here at our kitchen table. Okay, now, uh, Mr. Jeff, I have one. We're gonna go back a couple of slides because I want to show you right here. If you do not, on number four, if you do not have a freezer available, uh, if you're not doing this at home, if you're doing this in your classroom um, or you're doing this out as a group, there is a way that you can get your icy crust at the top of your planetary body so that you can do this mission. And that is this magic right here called canned air. Now, again, canned air, safety first, please be careful. Uh, you are not to misuse, so always have an adult around when you do this one. But what you can do is, canned air, 
Uh, when you turn a can upside down, the air comes out very cold. So what you can do is, and this is where I make a mess in my house sometimes, is spray it gently. And then you can see that you have a new, oops, a little higher, sorry about that. You have a new solid surface in areas. I didn't cover the whole thing, but that will work so that you can take this activity on the road. Now, I told you at the beginning, we had four activities. Now, as I was creating this activity, the idea of bringing the cold from the Pluto system or even the Europa system into my classroom without having to use liquid nitrogen, uh, which is where most uh, science educators will do frozen science. They'll bring out the liquid nitrogen, uh, really, really need an adult and it's very dangerous stuff. So I was looking for a different solution on how we could create these activities for these outer worlds, these outer planets and moons, Europa, and now especially Pluto. And canned air has become my hit, has become my go-to. So what I want to show you next is we're going to go to this picture right here. Just before I do that, I'm going to back up a little bit. Sorry if that's making you dizzy. Do you remember this cross section? Of course you do. This is Pluto's surface. We just sent our cryobot into the liquid ocean, but look at that beautifully diverse surface of Pluto that we know about because of the New Horizons mission and all of those photographs. We now know there are mountains, valleys, glaciers, frozen lakes. It is a varied surface and it is worth learning more about and studying. So we can take the idea of studying Earth's surface and turn it into a lesson for Pluto's surface. So how do we do that? Uh, if you know about plate tectonics, there are activities that come along with that, but I was not finding an activity that allowed me to see ex expansion and contraction, which is what is happening with some of these worlds, especially like the moon Europa. The reason it's, I, the reason it's ocean stays liquid is the pull of Jupiter's gravity expands and contracts the entire moon and that process keeps that water liquid. So there is expansion and contraction, which is why there are cracks all over the surface. Uh, we don't yet know enough about Pluto. Uh, Dr. Stern, please forgive me if you do and I haven't read enough yet, but we don't yet know enough about Pluto about why that's happening. But you can see in this image that a lot of expansion and contraction must have happened or still be happening to create those features. So the way we get to those features, and I use this one as a different cross-section image of Pluto, and then look at those details. We are actually going to use, and it's funny, it's just coincidental, lucky happenstance, that we are doing this on Valentine's Day because I happened to pick a red balloon and I'm about to cover it in chocolate. And it's going to look a little bit like a chocolate covered strawberry, but it is actually going to be the most fun, non edible chocolate covered strawberry that you have ever used. So my wife, my awesome wife, Melissa, just melted some chocolate chips in the microwave, just some melty chocolate before it cools too much. I'm going to blow up my balloon just a little bit of the way. There you go. All I want is a small planetary body. There you go. So I have a small planetary body. Hopefully the chocolate is not too hot. If it is, your balloon will explode and you will make a mess. I have done that. I've waited long enough. Hopefully it doesn't happen to me today. What you are going to do is you are just going to dip the end of your balloon, your planetary body into that chocolate and make there we go, a continental Pangea for your planetary body. So this is the surface of your planetary body. Now it's still melty and we have not tied the balloon. 
So we can't put this in the freezer because I can't let go. And this is the other place. Notice I still have my glove on where we uh, grab an adult and pull out for today. I'm going to fill in as the adult and we pull out our canned air and we put it at arm's length and we spray nice and gentle. And that's all it takes. Boom, just a little spray. And you will even see a frozen surface. Best thing I can tell you is to videotape this activity because re-watching it, look how that frozen surface is melting. After you videotape it, you can slow it down, watch how it melts. But now we have, not quite, I need to give it one more little, there we go. Now I have a solid surface, a solid Pangea. I told you I wanted an activity to show that expansion and contraction and how planets like Pluto get all of those surface features. As one example, take a look at this. Watch right here. Look at that. Your Pangea breaks apart. And when you videotape that, you can see where the surface was weak and where it broke apart. There you go, look at all of that. But the activity is not over yet. If you slowly release the air, don't let it all go at once. You can watch how the planetary body, you can watch, I'm gonna get that light out of there you, so you can see this one better. Watch how the Pangea comes back together, that continental drift, Watch how that all comes back together. And then you can hold it with your fingers and stop it at different areas. Take a look at that mountain range we just created. I'll show it on my forehead. Uh, it's a little hard with the dark background. And watch what's going to happen as we continue to let it go. We have mountain ranges forming. We have a big rift valley right in the middle. Uh, we have... Uh, plate tectonics here where chocolate is going over chocolate. We now have a visual representation, which A, is a whole lot of fun. B, you can do super cheaply. Uh, C, you can do over and over again. And if you videotape it, uh, you can slow it down and you and your students or your kids, you can all take a look at the lessons that can be learned from either the before, before we blew up the balloon, or the after, after we let the air out of the balloon slowly, and then we saw the continents and the pieces of chocolate come back together or leave giant rift valleys. Um, when I do this with students in class, what I'll do is I'll have them create a worksheet before on what they think is going to happen, both with their cryobot mission and with their Pluto plate tectonics mission, uh, and then have them continue afterwards. Uh, kids, I will give you one fair warning, just one, go back and listen to this, uh, because you are going to do it, and then you're gonna be a little sad. Don't lick that chocolate. Uh, this is very yucky when it gets on your tongue. Uh, I accidentally licked my finger one time when this happened. That's how I learned. Don't lick that chocolate. So uh, to just give you a really quick recap, uh, what we have done is we have talked about how kids can explore planets just like grownups, only without the spaceships and without the 20 year wait uh, of having the entire thing come to fruition. Uh, what we do with Zach and Zoe Adventures is we take those grown-up missions and those grown-up space and STEM topics and we bring them down to kid level and we turn them into really cool lessons that we can do in our kitchen tables or our neighborhoods or our classrooms or with our friends. Uh, and my favorite thing to see is when students or kids take these lessons and then they do them on their, on their own share them with me on social media, share with Lowell Observatory. I'm sure they would love to see it. Uh, because you joined the I Heart Pluto Festival, there are cardboard and rubber band rovers that you can make. There are cardboard and Dixie cup landers that you can make. 
And as you saw today, there are cryobot mission, 3D cross-section models. How fun is that? That you can make and freeze and refreeze. And one thing I forgot, if you want to do it again, if you want to get your marble, just use a spoon, go right in the side, drag your marble up to the top, bam, warm it up again, uh, warm it up again, and you are set to go. And then the last one, we have that Pluto plate tectonics mission with a balloon and just a little melty chocolate. I'm going to go ahead and stop my sharing right there. And then I'm going to ask Mr. Kevin, are there any questions for there? Or is there anything I can talk about? Yeah, there's a couple of questions. And, and if anybody has some questions, make sure to write them in. We've got a couple. Um, one is, um, do you have other um, of your activities recorded that we can watch? Zoe and I have just started to record our videos. So if you go to the website that was just on my slide, stemtobloom.com, you will see as we, build, as we build a brand new website with a lot more virtual activity. And here I can bring up that website um, right here. And you should be seeing it, is that right? We are. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> and maybe you want to talk about this as I scroll down a little bit. What other oh, thank you very much. So as you can see, I am a veteran-owned business. I already told you I'm, an Air, I'm a former Air Force officer. Um, and then if you would go ahead and scroll down just a little bit, what we do with Zach and Zoe Adventures, again, is uh, keep going until you see those, all those circles. Uh, and if you put all the circles sort of right, right there. Uh, thank you, Kevin. I appreciate that. Uh, we started Zach and Zoe Adventures with the first book all the way to the left, Field Trip to the Discovery Center. At the time, I was not an educator. I was actually just a docent there. Uh, I was still working full time with the Air Force uh, here in Colorado Springs and uh, had a health issue, Kevin, as you know, uh, which caused me to write my first book, which I thought was going to be a leave behind for my daughter. Uh, thanks to a great medical team, I'm still here. And my doc said, you seem to love this and it seems to be doing well for you. You should keep doing it. So we ended up turning one book into a trilogy of books, uh, which are the Zach and Zoe books on the edge. The Stem to Bloom magazine, as you can see, my favorite issue is still my Lowell issue, uh, which you can see on the cover there with Zoe at the helm of the Clark telescope. Uh, and then off to the right, you can see we do astronomy both at Starlight Observatory and we do sidewalk astronomy where Zoe and I take our 10 and four inch telescopes out in our SUV when, uh, but this is all before COVID, and we are hoping to get back to it once COVID is all done, and we'll set up outside an ice cream shop or outside in a strip mall and just let folks come by and look through that lens. Um, if you want to scroll down just a little bit more on that website, there are three more sets of circles right there. So we also partner with our local library district uh, where we do tween steam programs with them. Uh, most of those have stopped as our libraries have been closed for a very long time. Right in the, mission, right in the middle, you can see my Zoe uh, pre pretending to hold up a, hot, a high altitude weather balloon, uh, which we do twice a year. We partner with two other companies, uh, that two other groups that send up the high altitude weather balloon. And thus far in the first three years, Zoe and I have sent up I believe it's my, I believe we're over 250 kids <laughs> student experiments uh, to more than 100,000 feet in the atmosphere. And then Zoe and I are part of the chase team. We track them down with the GPSs. We bring back those experiments and we compare the kids experiments with their control group that stayed on the kitchen table and the one that flew to the edge of space at 100,000 feet. Uh, our annual STEM egg hunt uh, that was just something fun that we started. We, we are now into our third year annually. Um, if, you've ever, if you ever have kids and you ever brought them to a kid's Easter egg hunt out in the public somewhere, back when we were doing this, so it obviously didn't happen last year, they have taken the hunt out of egg hunt because they just put the plastic eggs in the field on the grass. So it becomes an egg, run and get them. There's no hunt. So what Zoe and I did to turn this into a STEM activity was we put the hunt back in. We got seven inch plastic Easter eggs 
And at our last one, we had 589 of them. And we hid them in a park here in Colorado Springs that's almost 300 acres all along the trails. And inside those plastic eggs, we hid more than $500 worth of space and STEM prizes. STEM books, STEM magazines, STEM toys. Uh, I think I had some Lowell Observatory stuff <laughs> to give so. away in there. <laughs> so that we do with Zach and Zoe Adventures. Okay, great. And we got another question from another excellent educator, Kendall Edwards. Can you explain more about how the inflation deflation of the balloon mimics the way plate tectonics work? Absolutely, absolutely. So plate tectonics, there are, uh, with plate tectonics, there are uh, clumps of continents, clumps of mass that are on top of a liquid surface. So they are floating. And as they continue to move around that surface, they eventually drift apart or they come together. So if I could go ahead and share my screen for just a moment, Kevin, if that's all right. I actually have another video, which I can share with Lowell, um, where I am going to right here. I will share this. And this is a video of me doing exactly what I did. So that shock clip right there is a Pangea. I'm going to back that up just a second. Um, a Pangea is a single continent body on a planetary body, uh, a single continent on a planetary body. But as planets expand and contract, it's not quite as obvious as this balloon, but as planets expand and contract due to gravitational forces and the liquid surface underneath the continents, whether it's a liquid water ocean like under Europa or liquid magma like on the Earth, I'm going to play this again. The continents will drift apart, as you can see there. And then I'm going to continue to let it run as I talk over it. And as I let the air out, those continents, those chocolate pieces, will drift back together. And you can see mountain chains forming. You can see a rift valley forming over here. Jeff, where, I'm not seeing the where, play, video where, play. I'm not seeing the video play on my end. Um, then up, it just oh, I'm very sorry about that. I'm very sorry about that. So when I, uh, so what we'll do is I'll just explain it here because I know we're running out of time. I'll explain it here. When you have that frozen chocolate at the end of your balloon, that single clump of frozen chocolate um, acts as your continent that is on the planetary body. The balloon is the planetary body. And as you blow to, as you expand the balloon, after you freeze the continent, uh, the expansion of the balloon will break apart that continent to form many continents. And that's exactly what happens with plate tectonics on Earth with the molten magma, which is underneath our surface, or like we were talking about Jupiter's icy mopa, that liquid water surface. Those cracks that are on Europa are from the icy surface splitting apart and then refreezing. So that's how this balloon activity, and if you go back and watch the video again, uh, if, you, if it doesn't make full sense, please feel free to reach out to me at, uh, at stemtobloom.com. Please feel free to reach out to me, and I'm happy to explain it further to anybody that's got that question, especially you, Kendall. Well, thanks so much, Jeff. I think we're about out of time, but um, wonderful. I really appreciate those experiments, and it really is you know, the idea of making science fun and, and yes. learning is a lot of fun. There's a lot of ways you can do it. And these experiments are perfect examples of that where we can learn about, you know, pretty much anything. You can do experiments like this and do them with your family. Um, they're absolutely activities. So we really appreciate you sharing uh, that tonight. Thanks for joining us. Um, I'd like absolutely. to thank the team. Um, I'd like to thank Daniel Adams and Richard Montano and Heather Craig for making everything work well tonight. Um, and thanks everybody for joining us and we'll see you next time. Thank you much.